Oh, pure horror. Is it actually as horrifyingly lackluster as it once was, or is it now going to become the most sought-after resource in this entire game? Well, if what you see isn't enough to tell you anything, then hear me when I tell you that this stuff is stupid OP. For you see, pure horrors are doubly effective at refueling anything that gets refueled by nightmares, everybody. Yes, indeed. Any percentages you see here are twice as much with this stuff in hand, so let's go get some yes. As while the video could very well have ended there for those keeping up with terrors below, there's still a lot to cover like the basics pertaining to an ancient fuel weaver kill, leading to an offering to the beckoning hand, which results in a visit from Charlie that ultimately starts the rift and then fuels everything to come. Well, unless we turn on said rifts ourselves, of course, then everything to follow is actually available day one. But what is to come, you ask? Pure horrors, of course. And we'll start with what I believe to be the best source of the crap, Fuse Shadelings. Them rifts spew them out, but only a maximum of five can exist at any time, even given a rift's highest level, and they're technically non-hostile unless we get too close to the rifts, so killing them is a cinch. Bright Shade helps, of course, but even still, they hardly fight us themselves, and at two to four pure horror drops each, finding the rift early is gonna be huge. But without a doubt, a Wilson's with a Shadow Courtier skill come in a very close second, as they can not only turn one Dreadstone into two pure horrors, but can then transmute three pure horrors into one dreadstone, or one pure horror into two nightmare fuel. But next up are resting horrors found chilling on relics chairs in the ruins, but only when rifts are active and we're sane enough to see them, mind. But they too drop a pure horror each, and quote unquote respawn on another chair fairly quickly, for very easy, additional piles of the stuff. Probably the safest option yet. But the nightmare wear pig follows suit, just as long as we can find them in our muddy biomes that is. But also note that we will not only need a pig Pickaxe and or Bright Shade Smasher to start the fight, but yet another way to go insane in order to destroy the Shadelings, otherwise the fight cannot truly begin. And while the fight is truly just dodge three lunges and get 11 hits in yourself for 90% of it, do be aware of the 5000 health gate as then he starts to smash. A mechanic that you should absolutely take advantage of. Finish him off however for 45 pure horrors and do it all again 20 days later in roughly the same location. And lastly, the Ink Blights. And yeah, sure, they're my personal favorite, but that doesn't make them any good, as fighting them can be quite a pain. My advice, though, focus down Jitters first, as he's the easiest to isolate. Switch the Shriek next, as she only has one attack and flees, and then just stick to the two hits and run tactic for Rasp, and you should be absolutely golden. These guys are not intimidating at all when it comes to actually fighting them. And if you bring a Bright Shade Staff, you'll mess them up all good in mere seconds. Each one drops one to three pure horrors, and the outcrop will respawn in a Nightmare Fissure nearby three days later. Just as long as the Rift is active, that is. Make notes. But now the extra nonsense. Pure horror crafts like Dreadstone Armor here. Each offer the same durability, armor protection, and sanity drain. However, together the latter have, so be aware of that. In fact, take advantage of all sanity drains, as the more cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs you are, the faster the armor regenerates. And yes, put them together for their second set bonus that sees that very same regen speed get even better. But two last notes. The armor pieces reduce the damage taken by nightmares, and both are shadow armor, so Maxwell and Wanda's rejoice. To continue, not only is pure horror needed to craft the station itself, we'll need a crap ton of it to actually craft at said Shadowcraft Plant Station. So do so and enjoy an umbrella and its souped up umbrella stats at the cost of a teensy tiny sanity drain, plus its ability to regen itself under acid rain while also fully protecting everything else in its wake. The Shadow Reaper we can make talks to us while we instantly reap most pickables en masse, however, it's a weapon as well, and a rather good one at that. Plain or damage gets to the damage levels we're actually seeing here, in case you're wondering, but it gets even better when used on lunar-based mobs and when the upcoming Void Armor is equipped. As long as consecutive hits are made over three seconds, damages increase up to six times, and once more, that synergizes well once all put together against lunar-aligned nonsense. So have fun. As the wrap-up comes the Void Armor itself, which follows very closely with Dreadstone with matching stats, a sanity drain that halves once all are together, and their ability to reduce nightmare damages. But putting the against the new stuff and can prevent an acid rain's effects, and the cowl is the only thing that stops the health drain of miasma, so it's good stuff. And yes, everything is shadow based for any Maxwells and Wandas out there. Make all the notes. As there you have everyone, a video that really could have ended 30 seconds in, but we needed to cover the stuff that we have been covering for months, otherwise this wouldn't have been a complete guide on pure horrors now, would it? And then you guys would have covered me with hateful comments. But thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, embrace the horror, and I'll see you in the next one. 
Bye-bye.